Hi guys, Lewis here. Today I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about DocuSign, especially if you're a beginner. DocuSign is an incredible tool for managing electronic signatures and simplifying document workflows. If you're running a business, working remotely, or just looking for an easier way to sign and send documents, DocuSign can help simplify the process. In this video, I'll guide you through everything you need to know about DocuSign. First, we'll start with how to register and set up your account. Then I'll give you an overview of the DocuSign dashboard so you can understand how it works. And finally, we'll dive into the most important part, how to sign a document using DocuSign. So let's get started. The first step in using DocuSign is creating an account. To do this, head over to their official website at DocuSign.com. Once you're there, look for the Try for Free button in the top right corner of the page. Click it to begin the process. One of the best things about DocuSign is that they offer a 30 day free trial. And the best part is you don't even need to enter your credit card details. This means you can explore the platform without any pressure or commitment. To start that trial, simply enter your email address in the provided field and hit the get started button. Shortly after you'll receive an email asking you to verify your address. Click the verification link. And once that's done, you'll be directed straight to your account dashboard. The DocuSign dashboard is simple and easy to use, designed to help you manage documents and collect e-signatures without any confusion. When you log in, you'll see a warm welcome and your account name right at the top. The main part of the screen focuses on what's most important, like starting a signature process. At the top, you'll see tabs for Home, Agreements, Templates, Reports and Admin. The Home tab is where you can always return to the main page and get started on tasks or browse templates. The Agreements tab keeps all your documents in one place, whether they're sent, received or still waiting to be signed. The Templates tab lets you create and reuse templates for documents you use often, saving you time and effort. The Reports tab provides valuable insights about your document activities, such as how many envelopes have been sent, recipient engagement, overall usage, custom metrics and file downloads. Lastly, the admin tab helps you manage your account settings and user permissions, giving you full control over how your account works. At the top right corner, you'll see your profile icon. When you click it, you can take care of things like updating your settings or checking your account details. You can also log out from here. Overall, the dashboard makes it super easy to find everything you need and get your work done quickly. To sign a document in DocuSign, start by making sure you're on the Home tab. Hey, quick interruption. Are you searching for the most efficient way to manage your business, life or finances? Well, I'm excited to share a valuable resource with you all. We've developed top-notch Notion templates to streamline your business operations, enhance your personal organization and optimize your financial management. Click the link down in the description of this video to check it out. All right, back to the video. Once there, click on the start button to begin the process. The first step is to add the document you want to sign. Click the upload button. You'll see several options about uploading your document. You can upload it directly from your desktop, use a template or pull it from other storage platforms like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive or OneDrive. For this tutorial, we'll focus on uploading a document from the desktop. Choose the document from your computer and upload it. Keep in mind that you can upload as many documents as you need. Next, you'll need to add the recipient. Click the drop down menu under the recipient section. If you're the only signer, check the box labeled I'm the only signer. Otherwise, add the recipient's name and email address. If there are multiple recipients, you can click on add recipient to include more. We will add a recipient. The name is going to be mine, just Lewis, and I'll enter my email as well. After adding the recipient's name and email, you'll notice a drop down menu next to their name. This menu lets you choose the specific action you want the recipient to take. If you want them to sign the document, select needs to sign. However, if you need a different action like in-person signer, receives a copy or needs to view, you can choose the appropriate option from this menu. Since this tutorial focuses on signing the document, we'll stick with the needs to sign option. Next to this, you'll find a customize option. When you click it, two additional settings will appear. First, you can add an access code for extra security so only you and the recipient can access the document. Second, you can include a private message specifically for this recipient, allowing you to provide personalized instructions or details. Additionally, you can set the signing order if needed by checking the set signing order box. 
This ensures the document is signed in a specific sequence. Once the recipient details are added, move on to the message section. Here, you can add an email subject and a personalized message for the recipient. This is a great way to provide context or instructions for the document. When all the details are in place, click the next button to move to the next step. After clicking next, you'll be taken to the main document view. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a list of fields you can use, such as signature, initial, date signed, name, email, and more. These fields are organized under categories like standard fields or custom fields to make them easy to find. You can simply drag and drop these fields onto the document where they're needed. For example, if a signature is required, add the signature field to the specific spot on the document where the signer needs to sign. If you need the recipient to fill out their name or email, drag the name or email fields accordingly. You can also add checkboxes, drop downs, or even attachment requests if the document requires it. Each field can be customized further after placing it on the document. For example, if you drag and drop the signature field onto the document, you'll see the right sidebar open up. In the sidebar, you can mark the field as a required field if the signature is mandatory. You can also adjust the formatting by changing the scale percentage to make the field larger or smaller. Under the data label section, you can assign a unique label to the field for easy identification. The tooltip option allows you to add helpful instructions or notes for the signer, which appear when they hover over the field. In the location section, you can see the exact pixel placement of the field on the document and fine tune its position manually if needed. Additionally, you'll find the auto place feature, which lets you set up fields in predefined locations, saving you time for recurring documents. You can also save the customized field as a template for future use by clicking the save as custom field button. If you decide a field isn't needed, you can simply delete it by using the delete button at the bottom. As you work, you'll see a preview of the document update in real time, so you can confirm everything is in the right place. Take your time to double check that all fields are correctly positioned and customized as needed. Once everything looks good, you can proceed by clicking the send button at the bottom of the screen. And that's it for this tutorial. Today we covered how to create your DocuSign account, took a detailed look at the dashboard and walked through the process of signing a document step by step. I hope this guide made everything clear and easy to follow. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. If you have any questions or want to share your experience with DocuSign, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care.